Hi guys, do we hear a new video? In this video will be a Elemental Shaman PvP discussion video for the War Within. I'm going to talk about my experience currently uh, at season one for Elemental Shaman, what I think about Elemental Shaman this season and how it goes. And in general, you see my tier list. I you, you see and understand what I think about Elemental Shaman, but how is it playing Elemental Shaman in Solo Shuffle, in Threes, and Solo QRBG? I'm also going to talk about the future because 11.0.5 will come out in an, a week and a half, pretty much 10 days, 11 days, uh, depending on whenever you're going to watch the video. And I'm going to give you a comparison on the two Threes because, in my opinion, it is a huge buff towards Elemental Shaman. It is a huge change towards the playstyle, um, at least around Ascendance, for example. But I'm going to talk about it a bit further down the line. Now, let's talk about Elemental Shaman. Now, as you may know, we got a rework uh, from Dragonfly to The War Within, and I always said that it was a good rework. Uh, I think it's for the better. I also think it is... Um, Elemental Shaman is not in a bad space, in a bad place. Uh, the rework for 11.0.5, which is the um, anniversary patch, the mid-season patch, uh, that will be even better. So, of course, they are going to uh, change Elemental Shaman again, not by a lot, but enough to say, look, this is again a rework and we have to adapt ourselves with it. Um, I think Elemental Shaman, like I said, in my Solo Shuffle tier list, it is good. And some people may say maybe average. For me, B tier is not a bad tier. It is like a good to average tier. And for 3v3, I could rate uh, Elemental Shaman a bit higher than in Solo Shuffle, just because of um, the variety in comps you have. And I would say also in general, uh, you have huge utility and you're actually a bit sturdy for a caster. Like um, some people say that it's very squishy. I think it's currently not squishy. And I think if you're playing versus double melee, this is like kind of the lobbies you kind of love to play in 3v3. Uh, in Soul Shuffle, it's a bit different because you cannot count on your healer that much. But in 3v3, if you're like in communications with your healer, you might actually win games more often than not. Because, again, communication makes you very, very much susceptible to survive all of the damage instead of, like, dying from the damage. Um, the build that I'm currently playing the most, again, I made a PvP guide, but this is, like, a recap of the season. Because, again, uh, mid-season will come out and the, the spec will change again. Uh, but this is the build I'm playing, like, most of the time. Um, I'm playing still the Earthshock build that I talk about in PvP guide video and we're playing with uh, Ascendance being like a huge haste boost uh, but you could also have um, the uh, 2 minutes Ascendance which is also quite good but I like this because whenever I get it activated by deeply rooted elements it gives still the 25% haste um, so I kind of like that uh, the, the thing is also that you still have a lot of damage on your Flame Shock. You have multiple ways to apply Flame Shock by having Liquid Magma Totem. And uh, your Primordial Wave is es essentially a 30 second go with your Ancestral Swiftness. And what you actually want to have is the multiple Earth Shocks that are going to be resetted by Arthur Shock. With also the refund of Mars Room spent. Uh, so you could actually just spam Earthshocks at one point. You could maybe have like four uh, four Earthshocks in a row, which easily just deletes someone from the uh, the, the face of Azeroth, pretty much. Um, this is pretty much the build and play. There are a few things that I do change. For example, if I want to be able to move my totems, I go for this, for example. If I'm playing versus like melee comps, I don't need Circus Seasoned Winds. Uh, if I'm playing for a uh, versus someone that has a curse, for example, a warlock or a elemental shaman, or for example, a hex, or if you're playing versus an affliction warlock that you want to uh, dispel agony, uh, you could remove the voodoo mastery, which I kind of like to be fair. But you remove uh, voodoo mastery for clan spirit. Uh, you could also say, look, maybe I don't need to have a totemic project projection, so I'll play, I'll play with clan spirit. So you have multiple, th multiple things that you can actually move and suit towards your playstyle, but also towards the comps that you're facing. Uh, 
Um, this is like super important. Again, you don't want to lose because someone got the NCC. Uh, that is like the worst type of things that you want to 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 face. So uh, again, I think clan spirit is so important, and you can put like a macro on your greater purge clan spirit, so you can always like swap uh, depending on who you're facing and who you're targeting. So uh, I kind of like that. And the hero talent that I'm playing the most is Farseer right now. I storm Stormbringer. I'm not playing too much right now. Uh, the issue is. And it's going to be fixed is that you don't really have a lot of applications and you don't want to like spam lightning bolts even if you're playing like with volcanic surge you 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 can spam lightning bolts but it's not like good damage like not enough at least um but that's going to be changing volcanic surge is going to be gone as well uh, speaking of which the pvp talents i'm playing with grounding totems shamanism and burrow i think the only talent that i really really swap every, every single time is grounding totem towards a uh for example only shield if you're playing double versus double melee uh, that will give you a sense of security with pushing people away and if you're not the target you can literally thunderstorm on the uh, healer unleash shield on the healer put a earthbind totem on the healer then do a hex on the healer so you can really just like um hostage a healer out of the combat which often results into a win in soul shuffle that's only if you're really not the target if you are the target i just use my pushes for uh, the melees obviously and sometimes i push like a caster if i feel like i need a second interrupt because you can interrupt and then you can do like a push for example to interrupt like uh the the cast so you can use be with like a micro cc uh kind of feel but uh that is kind of how i play uh i can play greedy with totem of wrath but uh, that is something i would swap burrow uh, with for example if i'm playing in solo rbg i don't really need burrow i play with totem of wrath speaking of which uh, i play a lot of slow QRBG, but not that much. I have six wins, one loss. Uh, I think the thing that is making me not really queue that much slow QRBG currently is that I'm focused on a lot of specs, a lot of classes, and I cannot find like a lot of uh, time to do slow QRBG. Now, solo shuffle. This week, especially, I played a lot of Elemental Shaman, but I also played 107 rounds, and I won 64, so it's a huge and a good ratio. I think it's around 60%, uh, maybe a bit lower because it's like 107, but obviously, um, it's, it's still like very good to be able to um have a good ratio in social shuffle which means that you can really climb very well i think like currently i'm 1800 mmr so i just need to do 3 3 and then i'm 1800 um the thing is i'm not really like that pressed to improve on social shuffle right now because of the cap like it's it's hard for everyone to p go past 2.2 let alone 2.4 so there there is no real urge for me to push very hard because i know that there is like a glass ceiling that needs to be broken by blizzard uh, once that is broken uh, i'll be like trying to be uh, as high rated as possible but right now i feel like i can relax a bit especially since elemental shaman is a, is a spec that is going to get reworked in a, a, one week and a half which will give us uh, a better like idea of what is this going to be in the meta for me it is a buff for a lot of people it might be a nerf for example the people that play like crit elemental shaman that is not going to be a buff for them because literally ascendance is not going to give you any benefits towards crit for your lava bursts uh, what am i saying for example again a lot of people don't know that for for some reason but ascendance is currently a buff so you're using ascendance or you're getting ascendance from the play rooted elements and it will replace chain lightning with lava beam which nobody uses removing the cooldown of lava burst which is neat but also increasing the damage of lava burst by an amount equal to your critical strike chance which it is gone in the next patch so i'm going to change my pov so here we have ascendance and now it is written differently and if anyone has like some reading comprehension, you understand that the portion of the crit giving you uh, more damage on your lava burst while ascendance is now gone. So now it instantly costs a flame shock and a 100% effectiveness 
Lava Burst at up to 6 nearby enemies. I think it's halved in PvP, but that's still fine. While Ascendant, Elemental Overload damage is also increased by 150%, and spell affected by your Mastery Elemental Overload cause one additional Elemental Overload. So for example, your Lava Burst, every single time you're going to do that, it is going to cause an additional Elemental Overload. And that Elemental Overload is going to do 150% more damage uh, or at least from elemental overload perspective. So if it's, let's say, 50% damage of a lava burst, which is the elemental overload, you do 150% increased on that, and that is the damage of lava burst that is going to be thrown out every single time you're going to do an overload damage. Or a lightning bolt. For example, this is not written about lava burst, it is written as elemental overload. So it means that you can play a lightning build and not feel bad that you have ascendance. That's a good thing. That's a good change. So you could actually play a lightning build if you so desire and not press any lava bursts while you have ascendance. While in the previous uh, iterations of, of ascendance, if you're playing like, let's say, a lightning build, although these days it's very hard to do so. But if you're playing a lightning build, you, whenever you're getting an ascendance from ascendance, for example, if you're pressing it, you're going to... Sp do as many lava bursts as you can not you're going to do a lot of lightning bolts because then you're wasting your ascendance okay so that's a good thing that's a very good thing i'm not going to i'm going to talk about the the uh, next changes afterwards but let's like finish the present um so currently i'm trying to do soul shuffle to increase my rating i'm trying to do some threes to increase my rating uh, started very badly like i had like a negative ratio and now i'm like climbing again uh, especially if i'm like playing with my friend like a healer friend um we have like difficulties finding the ideal dps but i think right now we did find a ideal dps to play with and since then we did like jump up 100 cr very easily and i'm going to keep on playing so we can actually climb out of these ranges so my goal is to be like glad at the, at the end of the season and legend at the end of the season as elemental shaman and as an enhancement shaman but that is for a different video but for now elemental shaman has been probably my my main spec i'm playing as shaman right now uh, enhancement shaman has been very much of a slog um i think the rework mini rework is going to help but i don't think it really addresses every single problem i think the button bloat is still like gigantic uh, I think um, the mobility problem is still a thing for Enhancement Shaman. But again, I'm not going to talk too much about it. Let's talk about Elemental Shaman. I think Elemental Shaman is in a great spot. I think people should play around haste. I'm playing like the, the most greedy build of an Elemental Shaman. I have like 22% haste, 40% mastery, 15% versatility. It's okay. Ideally, I think you should drop a bit of mastery into versatility to have a bit more of a cushion especially on the um, damage reduction side. But I do like mastery because, again, I think it's quite good to have those overloads. Unfortunately, it is not like very strong right now, but it will be stronger on the rework uh, because they are going to buff uh, this talent. So this talent only gives you 10%. On the rework, it's going to give you um, 40%. So it's going to be helping a lot um on your damage uh, of your over, uh, elemental overload obviously but it also increases the elemental and physical damage which again as you may know elemental shaman really relies on earth shocks to actually finish off targets uh, lava bursts are really really cool like it does damage but it is not like the one thing that is going to give you um enough damage to to uh, win or to destroy people pretty much um but overall I really like Elemental Shaman. I think if I may talk about like meta and how it is, Soul Shuffle, I prefer to play versus physical damage dealers, for example, Warriors. I think like an Arthur Rogue or, for example, a uh, Survival Hunter to a certain extent. Um, versus a Retribution Paladin, I find it very, very easy to face, for example. Uh, the ones I really hate are, for example, a good Assassination Rogue. A good sub rogue, uh, a very good feral druid just makes me very much hate elemental shaman. But unfortunately, fortunately, you don't see a lot of like very good feral druids. Um, I think 
facing like a very very good devastation evoker is super annoying because you don't have all the things that can actually stop them except like wind shearing like disintegrate is cool but it's something that is very spammable so it doesn't really matter if you're stopping one uh, ideally you stop the one that is coming after internity surge or after um fire breath for example because that is the one that is going to be uh doing the most damage um overall i think defensively I find myself more likely to survive than enhance from Shaman. Now, is it a placebo or is it because I'm like actually good at kiting as an as an elemental Shaman? Well, I don't know. Uh, again, I, if I if I see someone that is like near me, I see him jump on me, I thunderstorm, and then I do a earth bind, for example, and he's stuck there. Especially if it's a DH or a warrior or whatever, he's going to cry for this spell. And God knows in Soul Shuffle, these spells never come for roots, so. I personally enjoy Elemental Shaman. I don't. I, I I know that some people struggle with it. Personally, the grind has been very smooth for, for me, uh, especially in Soul Shuffle. I think um, overall, like if I can show you that my my numbers, I can show you my numbers. I think, can I? This is like Soul Shuffles, right? So, is it? This is not up to date. Twenty third of September. This is not up to date for me. Wait, ah, Ele ah, that's Elemental Elemental Shaman is this one? Yeah. That I think that the last one for Enhancement Shaman, this is for Enhancement Shaman. So Elemental Shaman, I have been like pretty much winning or go like even. Um, on my first ones, it was very good. Again, I did the six wins, five wins, uh, three wins, three wins. Uh, here, for example, four win, four win, four win, four win in a row, which is cool. Here also, four wins, four win, three wins, like three games where I did three wins. So I, I actually didn't lose any CR since the 2nd of October, pretty much. Since I replayed Elemental Shaman, so the 9th of October, I actually decided to play Elemental Shaman again because I kind of missed it. And uh, I actually wanted to decide, like, who am I going to main? Like, which spec do I feel like I'm going to be more, most comfortable to play? And I find myself very comfortable with Elemental Shaman. And since then, I'm actually like very much climbing. And uh, I think it's it, it will just keep on being better with time. And just like dedication, I just need to play way more Elemental Shaman to just go higher. It's like just a time issue and not really a skill issue at that point. Uh, at least that's how I feel right now. Um, I think for the people that do struggle on Elemental Shaman, because I, I want to talk about... I'm not going to talk only about me because I know that some people do struggle with the spec. You need to understand that your kit is not only about lava burst and flame shocking everyone. Having your earth elemental stun the the enemy, being able to like kite to earthbind. For example, if you see a BM hunter, I don't know if there is a BM hunter. For example, this one is a BM hunter and his pets are on me. I'm going to go through, boom, earthbind here. The pets are like rooted. I'm going back here. I'm going to do damage. So the BM hunter has to use freedom on himself, but if he's like out of line of sight, it's not going to be capable to do so. So he has to be in line of sight of his pets to do freedom, or he needs to mind like meant pet to get a dispel, for example, if he has it talented. Uh, but even then, that needs also to be like in line of sight. There's a few things that you can do as Elemental Shaman that no other spec can do. I think doing like, for example, a lasso, like for example this, if I see this enemy is like very annoying to my, towards my DPS and he, my DPS is going to die, I lasso, go around the corner. Nobody's going to stop me except if Trinket. If he's Trinket, that's fine. You can do, always do a hex now, it's an invalid target, but I can do like my uh, spirit, walk spirit walker's grace into a hex, nobody can stop me, except if there is a grounding or whatever. Uh, doing a, a focus macro hex on the healer is like massive, and you can fake it. Like if like it's a, a priest, and if it's a good one, he will be seeing the hex, he will have, he will have to fade. So if, it, if you know that it's coming, just escape so you can stop the cast. Like it's, it's really, really very, it's very good to actually like being able to stop a cast, to, to, to stop a cast and to fake cast on the go. So you can actually like 
get the fade out and get some CC on the enemy. Uh, also hexing the second target. So again, that's something that maybe some people don't know. Hex is so hard to dispel for a lot of like a lot of like specs. For example, priest cannot dispel hex. That's something that they cannot do. Holy paladin can't do that as well. So it means that if you have a holy paladin or a disc priest against you and you're hexing, let's say the second DPS, which is the mage, he is actively not doing any DPS for six seconds. It is really on the same level as a cyclone, except cyclone cannot get broken, hex can. That is the issue for in social fall, people can break your hexes, unfortunately. But those few seconds that they don't do damage are enough for you to recover, but also to win games. And that's how I won most of my games if I feel like I'm the target and there is no possibility for me to hex the healer because it's way too far. I just hex the second DPS and try to be very annoying. For example, if I play on the shield with Thunderstorm versus a warrior, I just thunderstorming away, he's going to charge me, I'm going to then on the shield, he's going to get knocked and rooted. And then I'm going to put a Irvine on him and boom, he will have to ask a freedom or a dispel to get out of that route or he blaze storms or whatever. He can do a lot of stuff to actually get out, but he will be frustrated. And then whenever he's going to be next to me, boom, I do a lightning lasso into a spirit walker's grace. Nobody's going to stop me. He has to drink it. And then you can do even a hex afterwards. You have many things that you can do to actually be annoying and to be surviving. Like, if you're face tanking the enemy, if literally you're standing here, the Windwalker is standing here and he's hitting you and you're just trying to do your damage and you're not moving at all, well, you can also go Wolf, you can just do this, you can push him, for example, and then knock him with, like, Thunderstorm, which didn't show for some reason, but I did do a Thunderstorm. Then, obviously, you're not going to survive. I think the damage, like, the... the the survivability of an elemental shaman is actually like tied to how you use the elemental shaman in defensive um, in defensive phases. I would say you you have your go, okay? You can respect your go. You can say, look, I'm doing my go. I want to respect my go. If I see like boom, and then I have a problem with your wave, and then you can do your your go, and you get like a sentence. Yes, I understand that you're standing still, or you're trying to do your, the most damage possible because you have your assisters up, you have your uh, earth shocks up. But once that go is over, you're not going to you, you're most likely not going to kill anyone if you don't have mouse room first and foremost. But also um, your lava bursts, if you don't get like those uh, lava surge procs, you don't need to hard cast in front of them. You can do a lightning lasso to, to just survive a bit of the damage and just wait out. Like your problem with your wave is going to come up, come back up. It is back up, and you can do another go, for example, right? Whenever you can actually do that, you just do your go, and it's fine. You you can you can really do a lot of damage and be fine with uh, how how you are uh, surviving and how you're dealing damage. So those are the tips I'm going to give for a lot of people. I'll try to do some gameplay. I think I'm just very much sluggish in the fact of how I can um, record my gameplay. It just doesn't happen. Sometimes I'm just playing Soul Shuffle and I don't have my uh, streamlabs up and. I forget about it, but also I'm just like, look, I just want to play. I'm very happy that the queue is up. I'm not like thinking about like, I need to make a video about it. Uh, if I was streaming a bit more or like streaming at all, I would then like get the gameplay from my stream. So it would be easier to show you what I'm doing. Uh, unfortunately, it just is not the case. I'm not streaming like uh, it's very hard for me to combine everything. Um, but obviously i want to show you gameplay i want to show you how it's done so i will be making video maybe a commentary video so i can you make you understand how i survive the damage and how i kite and how i actually be a nuisance to the enemy i think again if i'm a warrior i don't like to face elemental shaman because i know how capable elemental shaman can be yeah, I want to be the same. I want to explain how you can be the, that guy that is very annoying for the, for the for the lobby to be so Again, thank you for watching this video. Really, I appreciate you. Hopefully, you find it a bit interesting uh, about the the elemental shaman present. Now, for the second part of the video, for the people that do like the 11.0.5 changes, I'm going to give you a few insights on why I think it's a better uh, talent tree for um, the mid-season patch. So, 
we have Stormkeeper. So I'm going to be like doing very fast, right? Stormkeeper is now a very easy talent to take. So you can take it before the eight the talents, like talent nodes that you need to take, right? So you have a lot of options and you can do some great stuff. You don't even need to do flash flash of lightning, right? So now you have the options to like forego it if you really want to. Personally, since I do put Earthquake, I would take Flash of Lightning. This is not like a guide video, but it is like pretty much a, a, a small like preview of how I would do to like get my Elemental Shaman going for the mid-season. I'll take Swelling's Monstrum because I would like to have 5% Earthshock damage. Lightning Capacitator, again 8% more damage on Earthshock. That's still very big. Uh, I would still play with Earth Shatter because again, eight percent more damage on Earth Shock. Earth Shock is still going to be the most thing, like most important thing, um, if you're thinking about it for your Elemental Shaman because it is like your spender and it really feels like a spender. I'll be playing with Primal Fury, which is uh, a great uh, way to deal more damage whenever you're critting, and you also have Echo Chamber, which I find probably the most value talent if you're like having a bit of mastery like me so echo chamber will be something i will be taking i'll be also taking elemental unity i'll be taking also flames of cauldron because i want to have more ticks on my flame shock and reduce cd on flame shock as well and then we have like four points where you can actually say look i'm thinking i'm going to be more a bit uh, about lightning uh, damage or i'm going to be more of a about lava like lava bursts the thing i can do is for example say look I would like maybe to have reduced a uh, CD on my, um, like, uh, not reduce CD, but like my reduced cast time on my uh, lightning bolt, for example. That is probably way easier and way better if you went for Tempest. But IMO, I think Ice Fury and Fusion of Elements is still like a go to for me. Uh, it does like so much damage if you're having like that, like, extra elemental blast coming after your ice fury that itself is like a mini go and it's like a rng go so it's very hard to play like against and you cannot really like um how can i say you cannot really prepare yourself with that um i would take improved flame tongue because i do like to have more lava burst damage i'm on and you could also say look now i have like all the talents i need to get like on the on the uh, last tier I could say, look, I want to do more damage on, your, on my Lightning Bolt because it will ch have a chance to call down two internal strikes, which it doesn't hurt that much, but it, it kind of hurts okay. It's like one-fifth of a Earth Shock, pretty much. It's not impressive, but it's still there. Uh, you can say, look, I want to have more Maelstrom, which is respectable. You could also say, look, I want to have like the Lightning Elemental, uh, whatever I'm going to call Stormkeeper, which... Effectively, it's only 10% of uptime in your whole fight. It's not going to be impressive damage. I think it's only like 3 or 4% of your whole damage. Um, or you're going to take a, a buff to yours, towards your duration of elemental uh, in, elementals in general. Or you're taking Flux Melting if you feel like you want to do even more uh, Lava Burst damage. Right now, what I would think is I would take Flux Melting. I don't really need power of the Maelstrom because it only like buffs my Lightning Bolt and I don't think I'm going to play like a Lightning Bolt build. Um, there is a world where I do, but right now it is not the, uh, it's not the case right now. So I'm, I'm playing around Lava Burst doing more damage. And now I'm playing Ascendance. I think Ascendance is like going to be a go-to for everyone. I think that's why it's also very central of this spec because they want you really to be using this. And the only way to get it is by getting a cook chamber so they really want you to do more elemental overload damage but also they want you to be playing with ascendance i think there is no way you're not playing with ascendance right now especially with how it's played i think first ascendance is probably the best way to go because you want to have as many ascendance as you go as you want because this is really really strong in my opinion um, now the, the thing that i would say that is maybe not a given is that deeply rooted elements now is only activated if you're doing earth shocks earthquakes earthquakes or elemental blasts and that is seven percent chance so again in a match soul shuffle match i do around 10 to 20 earth shocks and that is counting on how long the match goes and you only have seven percent so realistically it will only pop out of 10 earth shocks if I'm very optimistic, one Earthshock. 
I don't think it's that good. I think it is now a skippable point. I think it's quite hard to get um, like a good value on it, except if it's not on casting. Now, for now, it is around casting. So it means that if you're casting Earthshock and you do play with Mountains Will Fall, the, the Elemental Overlord doesn't count on the uh, proc chance. So for me right now, it's a dead talent. I don't think it's good. Um, right now for Elemental Shaman at least, for Enhancement Shaman it's a bit better, but for Elemental Shaman it's not good. Um, I'll be playing with Eye of the Storm, I think. I'll be playing with Promodio Wave, it is still like a very strong uh, spell to have. I'll be playing with Splintered Elements, I'll be playing with Liquid Magma Totem, I'll be playing with Magma Chamber because I still want to have most damage on my, on my Earthshock. I still play around a Primal Elementalist, and now you have a few choices. To, like, you have, still have two points left, right? You could still say, look, I don't need Splintered Elements because who cares about the haste? I respect that. But right now, those two points you could spend on Erupting Lava, which is increasing the duration of Flame Shock by 6 seconds, but also increases the damage by 50%. Not the crit, but just like baseline, which is probably better than what we had before. And also, your Lava Burst will consume up to 3 seconds of Flame Shocks, instantly dealing that damage. Lava Burst Overloads benefits at 50% effectiveness. So, the thing is... You're going to reapply flame shocks way more often. That is just a case. It will be what it is in the end of the day. But you will have some good damage out of it. I think it adds up around 10% or like 10 to 15% of your damage on your lava burst. So if you did like let's say a 600k lava burst, it would be 60k or 70k, 75k increased damage on that lava burst because of the flame shock. Um, uh, consumption now it could be a bit more but I like I'm I'm like kind of I didn't test on the PTR but in my opinion from the maths I did it could be a very good talent with a good value so I'll be playing with erupting lava there is also echo of the elements elementals but I don't really like that talent it doesn't do too much for me and there is like the small off chance that I really want to play with mountains will fall the thing is that the elemental overlord damage is not that uh, impressive on Earthshock, but if you get Echo Chamber, my guess is that it is now a bit more impressive and can be a bit more better. Now, if you want to be a bit more safe, which I understand, there is also a talent which is Elemental Equilibrium, which is like a 10% buff towards your damage every single time you're doing Primordial Wave. It's like a very safe bet, does do good damage, and your damage is mostly relevant from the point where you're going to do a promote your wave anyways, and then you're going to do a lava burst, and that's the moment where you're going to do your go. So it goes very well, and I think with these talents, now again, many things can change, depending if you're going for lightning build or if you're going for uh, the lava burst build. I think it's a huge win. In general, also, you will see, I already talked about it, but they removed Volcanic Surge, but they buffed Lava Burst by 20%, I think. Which is a huge buff towards my build, because I don't play with Volcanic Surge. So, it's a 20% flat buff towards Lava Burst, which is fine. And I think they do buff Lightning Bolt as well. Uh, so, that's a good thing. Um, what else can I say? I think, in general, um, it's a huge buff. A huge utility buff. You have Stormkeeper for free now. You have more damage on your Elemental Overload. You have, again, more access and easier access towards the talents that you really want to play with. So, personally, it's a huge W. Uh, one thing to note, also, Farseer got changed. So, you have Routine Communication now. We normally play with Heat My Call, at least I play with Heat My Call, which is the additional 4 seconds. But now Routine Communication could be very strong, because Lightning Bolt, Lava Burst, Ice Fury and Frost Shock costs have a 5% chance to call an Ancestor to your side for 6 seconds. Now, how often does it really proc? That is the question. But having multitude of spells being able to proc the, the Ancestor can actually help you to be very proactive with your damage. I think in general, uh, it's a huge benefit. I think it's a huge change uh, change towards Elemental Shaman to have Farseer like this, but also your Ascendance like this. And then if you're playing like Stormbringer, which you can still play, you have multiple things that has changed. For example, Arc Discharge 
It will Tempest will cause your next two chain lightnings or lightning bolt spells to be instant and deal 40% increased damage, which is awesome uh, because in general uh, arc discharge is not as strong as uh, on live. Like on live, it is literally if your tempest strikes more than one target, you will get uh, the benefits. Now it's like always going to give you the benefits, which is a good thing. Um, and overall, you have more mobility with lightning conduit. You have more defensives with nature's protection, for example, which is a 3% at all times. Or you're getting like a effectiveness on your healing with surging currents, which is also a good thing. Um, you have, what else? You have a, a mastery buff if you want to play around it. So if you're doing Tempest, you're getting a mastery buff, um, which is going to feel good as well. And overall, I think they're doing a good job to Elemental Shun. I think the Hero Towns could use a bit of tweaking, but uh, overall, I'm very happy. So this is like the part for 11.0.5 and explaining why I'm very excited about it. So... It's a 35-minute video. I didn't want to do like a, such a long video, but I wanted to discuss about a few things to uh, make you know and understand that Elemental Shaman is in a good place and it's going to be in a better place. And don't compare Elemental Shaman with the S plus tiers because again, it's another world. They need to be nerfed. Elemental Shaman should not be nerfed, and that is a good thing. So we have like the security of not having a spec being gutted, at least from my knowledge. Uh, so, um, not all of the specs can actually talk, talk or say that for themselves, so that's a good thing. Again, thank you for watching this video, really appreciate you. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that yet. And we will catch each other probably very soon in the next video. Have a great day. Bye.